Hello friends, welcome back to the class 1 lecture on introduction to aircraft structures. So far we have been discussing on the components of the primary structure of an aircraft and their functionalities and the loads they carry. Also we have been discussing in uh, detail the types and construction of the fuselage structure and also I have been explaining to you the difference between the monocoque and semi monocoque structures and what kind of structural components they have and how the load distribution within the structure occurs. So now we'll be moving on to the tail cone or the aft fuselage. As I mentioned earlier, aft fuselage in an aircraft is also called as empennage. Aft fuselage comprises of uh, a tail cone bit and the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. So each uh, this component of the tail cone, they have their uh, individual purpose. Tail cone, they have tail cone uh, in the modern day aircraft uh, comprises of an auxiliary power unit, which is the miniature engine that generates power to the all electrical and uh, cabin pressurization systems. And uh, horizontal stabilizer comprises of uh, elevators and the vertical stabilizer uh, compresses of the rudder. So uh, as I as mentioned earlier, uh, elevator is responsible for pitching motion of the aircraft and uh, rudder for the yawing motion of the aircraft and the trim tabs are nothing but the uh, balance tabs also called as balance tab they are used for correction, motion correction. Uh, imagine a situation when uh, on the uh, when the flight is on the ground when is the flight is on the airport moving uh, when the pilot wants to turn the flight to the left to its to his left or right so he deploys the rudder and uh, suppose he has overturned little bit too much he has turned and he wants to bring it again back to its normal position he will deploy the trim tab because these operate on the concept of physics that uh, each of these panels will generate uh, force when uh, it is met with an uh, air stream. So when the rudder is this side and the trim tab is that side. So imagine like uh, the area or surface area of the rudder is greater than the trim tab. So obviously greater the surface area, greater the force generated. Uh, and the similar to trim tab, it will generate uh, a force which is uh, when, when deployed opposite to the rudder, it will uh, generate equal and opposite force. But uh, since the area of the trim tab is uh, quite uh, less, so it will generate a little bit of force so that the corrective action, so to bring back the flight to the desired amount. Moving to the vertical stabilizer and rudder, and uh, in in general to the elevator, they have uh, yeah, they, they are the combination of uh, ribs and spars. Uh, both are uh, beam type structures. Spars are generally I beam or C section beams, and uh, ribs are again I beam or C section beams. The you can see the in this picture you can see the internal structure of the vertical stabilizer and rudder. So these are exactly similar to the uh, wing structures we are going to see in a minute. I am going to, I am moving to the next slide. Uh, I am going to speak to you, uh, speak to you in a minute about the construction aspect of the wing structure. So before uh, looking into that, uh, first look at the Sorry, first look at the types of wings and uh, categories of the wing. So as you, as you, you might have uh, noticed that uh, there are uh, many different types of uh, wing structure which have been classified according to their shape, according to the, according to their location or the attachment points on the fuselage and according to their constructions. So this is greatly, this is 
um, because of the their impact on the performance characteristics of the aircraft and the desired outcome and the aircraft manufacturer wanted uh, suppose if it is if they want a very uh, fast performance uh, like a fighter in a fighter jet plane then they will go for the delta shaped wing in order to reduce the drag in order to improve the maneuverability in order to on the when, whenever there is a uh, when, whenever there is a, a fighter aircraft going for a mission so it has to have a very quick maneuverability in terms of rolling in terms of uh, vertically going up or going down so in those cases a delta wing uh, proved to be very efficient so whenever they manufacture an aircraft they do the aerodynamic wind tunnel testing just to understand the uh, aerodynamic characteristics of the uh, shape of the structure so based on their shape they are uh, two or three types one or uh, first one is the straight type and other one is tapered type something like tapering and other one is the delta wing and other one is the uh, same triangular shape wing but it is a swept back wing uh, what is swept back is like uh, they have an uh, hydraulic or uh, pneumatic uh, actuators over here that, uh, that, that that could move the wing little bit forward and backward um, uh, just like uh, the dolphins do on the something like uh, to alter the lift and uh, aerodynamic characteristics and similarly coming to the uh, location of the wing on the fuselage or the to where it is attached it can be a low wing or it can be an high wing and uh, it can be exactly on the middle and uh, it can be a dihedral and when it is dropped down it is called anhedral they greatly influence the stability characteristics of the aircraft how it is stable and uh, for what purpose the, the different purpose the foreign for example the agricultural when the aircraft is used for agricultural purpose like spraying uh, pesticides and this they usually go for the high wing and whenever there is a <clears throat> uh, whenever the uh, people wants to train uh, they go for the low wing aircraft like a small trainer uh, because of the maneuvers and uh, uh, during the air shows you might have noticed that uh, if you happen to see one like a uh, small trainer aircrafts performing the loops uh, all uh, rolling all all kind of funny loops and those uh, aircrafts are usually the low wing aircrafts so those are uh, not that stable they can easily be maneuvered into different positions and uh, similarly they have uh, a gull wing and inverted gull wing uh, used for different purposes so these uh, arrangement of the wing structures and shapes uh, greatly influence the aerodynamic performance characteristics of an aircraft and also they have a very great impact on the fuel consumption of the flight uh, coming to the type of construction they have a yeah, cantilever beam type of construction <clears throat> over here the big one is the wing and the small one is the horizontal stabilizers and they have semi cantilever semi cantilever is uh, something like a strut that is being uh, bolted or welded to the in the middle of the wing or somewhere on the one third of the wing uh, that is called uh, semi cantilever and uh, this is again the truss type uh, braced wing which has uh, uh, two sets of wings one on the top and one on the bottom it is also called as biplane whenever this type of arrangement is there it is called as biplane and uh, they have uh, a truss type of uh, struts and rods and tubes in the middle just uh, braced together to make it uh, more strength effective moving to the wing internal structure so wings play a very major part in the generation of the lift so they have to be really careful and really strong in uh, 
designing the wing because they if uh, an aircraft loses one wing then what happens is like uh, the pilot has to somehow maneuver uh, the aircraft to the ground using the other wing but it's uh, one of the worst nightmare of the pilot to lose one wing so wing uh, if you look at the wings they also accommodate the fuel tank and they also have the control surfaces along alongside their uh, trailing edge uh, trailing edge is the rear edge this is the front edge it is also called as this is the front edge of the wing this is also called the leading edge and this is called as the trailing edge so if you look at the internal wing structure it has lateral stiffeners called ribs and the longitudinal stiffeners called spars uh, ribs are uh, typically I section beams and C section beams spars are same typically I section or it may be C section and they also have uh, uh, very small beams something similar to what we have in fuselage they are called stringers uh, stringers may be Z section beams or hat section beams or C section beams uh, and uh, the entire uh, internal structure is covered using the skin uh, skins or the skin panels this uh, skin panels take the axial compression and uh, axial tension and along with the uh, in plane shear stresses in plane shear loadings and the ribs take the vertical shear and the flanges of the rib they take a percentage of the axial loading but whereas the stringers and spars primarily take the bending of the wing wings and also when the uh, in a few circumstances the wing might twist so ribs pr primarily resist the twisting action and torsion and they keep the wing stiff and they keep it in place and the distance between the ribs are, are also very very calculated or have been analyzed while designing or taken into consideration while designing the wing because if there is a big amount of spacing the panel the skin panel might buckle buckling is again a instability concept you might have heard when in, when you are going through the course of uh, strength of materials or uh, uh, finite element analysis buckling is uh, primarily due to compression forces in plane compression forces that could uh, cause the panels to buckle or it might be a, a compression force from bending as well bending buckling or uh, a shear buckling it might be due to a shear as well it might be a shear buckling so the distance between the ribs are taken into consideration while designing the designing an aircraft on the to the right you can see that uh, a typical I section of the spars where the flanges are called spar caps and the whips uh, take the shear and this uh, and the flanges or the spar caps take the bending sometimes the spar may not be uh, manufactured as a single piece it might be a caps may be separate and whips may be separate and they are spliced together uh, using our riveted joints uh, mostly riveted joints and uh, using the counters and rivets so that they don't protrude outside or uh, pan and rivets so they usually uh, rivet together in order to provide an uh, machined spar these are typically a machine spar that have been uh, assembled put together on the to the bottom right you can see a <clears throat> cutout from the wing structure where you can see the skin is a composite hexagonal you can see the hexagon shapes these are honeycomb sandwich panel is a composite skin it's an alternative to the metallic uh, material composites are very strong and very lightweight and they provide a very high uh, strength to weight ratio and uh, over here you can what you can see is just a hat hat shape hat section stringers running throughout and over here uh, it's a typical uh, 
a skin panel that is being removed and uh, the internal structure of the wing is shown whereas uh, you can see the ribs here with the uh, with the stringers running all over and over here to this diagram like uh, again the ribs are uh, sometimes the ribs may not be a manufactured as a single piece it might be a nose rib or it might be a mid rib and their aft rib it might be three pieces coming together and uh, three pieces being riveted together most internal structures of the fuselage wing and tail cone they use the riveting they they are put together using the metallic fasteners rivets they are generally not welded they don't use any welding process into the internal structure because fasteners provide a much more strength capability uh, in terms of the load distribution in terms of the uh, uh, they meet the criteria strength criteria so fasteners uh, they are uh, usually internally riveted and you can also see that uh, there is a big spar rear spar and different spar running uh, which is a type of i beam whatever uh, whatever it is so and then also there are, there might be a few holes on the ribs that is that is primarily used for the control system and uh, hydraulic or pneumatic system or the uh, pipes to the fuel tanks and these these kind of holes uh, they serve the, these purpose that uh, they are being used for the uh, leading the uh, uh, fuel pipes and those kind of stuff moving on to engines engines or the hearts of the uh, aircraft so they provide they produce thrust engines produce thrust as you can see that uh, there is uh, there are uh, different components in the engine which we are not going to look at this course because this course covers pretty much the primary structures of the aircraft in detail and uh, in depth i'm going to go into the primary structures of the aircraft and finite element aspect of uh, those stuff in to give you a very brief introduction on the engines like uh, engines take in the air and they have uh, there are different types of engines obviously there are turboprop and turbojet and the ramjet engine i have not shown the ramjet engine over here this is a turbofan engine where it has a set of blades called fan which is the placed within the engine nacelle structure inlet nacelle and what happens is the air is uh, being inlet or air is being sucked into the engine and uh, it is it gets compressed it has a set of uh, rotating blades called a low pressure compressor and then high pressure compressor first one is the low pressure and then comes the yes, set of miniature blades which is closely placed it's called uh, over here you can see and uh, it is called high pressure compressor what happens is this com uh, compresses the air and then finally it goes into the combustion chamber in the combustion chamber they have the spray type uh, nozzle mixer for the fuel spraying the fuel and also there is an igniter so it ignites the fuel and burns at a very high temperature and then uh, what happens is the exhaust gas from the combustion chamber goes on to the turbine turbine is the one like it extracts it converts the thermal energy into the mechanical energy it extracts the power from the exhaust gases from the combustion and then drives the shaft so usually it is the high pressure turbine first and then comes the low pressure turbine whereas the compressor it is low pressure compressor and the high pressure compressor and the turbine it is like high pressure turbine first and then the low pressure turbine and then finally on uh, the gas are uh, expanded into the exhaust so this is a simple brief of the aircraft engines uh, modern day engines moving on to the landing gears a typical landing gear what you are seeing on the picture is a typical uh, a couple of types of uh, typical landing gears landing gear has uh, a set of uh, wheel base 
wheel base uh, comprises of a set of wheels and attached to the hydraulic or pneumatic uh, uh, strut, pneumatic uh, actuators. And there is also a side strut provided uh, for the strengthening reasons and shock absorbing reasons. And uh, they come into picture only during the landing and takeoff. Uh, for a big passenger aircrafts, they are stowed inside the uh, landing gear compartments. They have a landing gear compartments underneath the fuselage. So they open and then they retractable landing gears. Retractable landing gears, they kind of retract and stowed inside. Whereas on the, when we go back to the very small uh, trainer aircraft, something like this, they already, they don't have the provision of uh, retracting the landing gear. So landing gear produces a good amount of drag. So they, uh, some of the thrust is uh, lost due to the landing gear being protruding outside during the flight. So the next one would be the, I'd be talking on the materials used in the construction of the airframe in a minute. 